Which Harry Potter characters are the best? Which are the worst? Was Snape a good person? Did Dumbledore manipulate Harry? How did Hagrid's muggle father impregnate his giant? Characters in this series have had so much done to them through the story. So let's deep dive all of it and rank the characters from best to worst. Disclaimer, I didn't pick these characters. This was a predetermined tier list from somebody else. We're starting with Oliver Wood. I'm going to say something controversial, which is maybe a ropey way to start this video, but I think Oliver Wood is a bit of a nothing character. <gasps> like there's a bit of comic relief and an inspiring love for Quidditch, but overall, I'm not convinced his character has enough about him to be anything more than average. So we're going to go C tier for Oliver Wood. Up next is James Potter. Now, James doesn't really feature in the series that much. Like, the Marauders flashbacks give him a bit of substance, but there's not much to him except for the fact that he's kind of arrogant and one-dimensional. Like, we do get his loyalty to his friends coming through when we find out about the whole Animega story of how he, Sirius, and Peter supported Remus when they found out he was a werewolf. But ultimately, a guy that is dead before chapter one of the first book even begins, I'm going C tier and I think it's generous. Okay, Harry Potter, the main character. I think as protagonists go, Harry leaves a lot to be desired. Honestly, I think if you ask a hundred Harry Potter fans who their favourite character is, I'd be surprised if even five said Harry. The thing is, it's not that he's without his flaws. Like, he's angry, he's sassy, he's sarcastic, he's rash. I just think his internal monologue is surface level in the books. Like, he has to do the right thing all the time. Like the second task in the Triwizard Tournament when he rescues everybody rather than just Ron. Kind of sums up how boring and predictable he is with doing the right thing all the time. And his response to anything going badly ever is either anger or sulking. He doesn't feel like a very nuanced character. For me, the supporting characters are far better formed than Harry is. For that reason, he's going C as well. Maybe every Harry Potter character is C tier at best. So Molly Weasley is our first truly multifaceted character. She has real flaws, she has real issues, she has real motivators. I would say she's a bit too on the nose with the a good woman is a good mother trope that Harry Potter drowns in as a series. But the difficulties that she experiences with poverty, with rowdy children, her really human moments when she falls for the Daily Prophet's lies about Hermione, and then her moments of love and support for Harry where she is like the epitome of his found family. She's a brilliantly written character, and that story culminates perfectly in her defeating Bellatrix, namely to save her daughter. She has her range from dependable, cuddly, supportive, to ruthless, fiercely loyal and protective. Molly is borderline between A and S tier. I think we're gonna go A tier, mostly because there's a lot we don't know about her. Like her past, her motivations, her life before being a mother. If she were at Hogwarts and therefore in more of the stories, she'd probably be an S tier, but as it happens, she only really ever appears in the start of a book or the end of a book, not in like the meaty bit in the middle. I don't think Remus Lupin is a good person. And I made a whole video about it, so if you want to watch that and then argue with me there, feel free. But just because I think he's a bad person, doesn't mean I think he's a bad character. He has flaws, he has battles, he has tribulations. We see a lot of his struggles in The Prisoner of Azkaban. He's battling guilt, remorse, honour, duty, friendship. And these things come back again in the later books when he's battling with his feelings for Tonks, and his guilt when he becomes a father. There is a lot to the character of Remus Lupin, and I like him as a character. But again, like Molly, there's still so much that we don't know about him, which means he can't go into S tier, we're gonna do A tier for Remus Lupin. Wormtail has a lot about him, from a marauder and a friend loyal enough to learn to be an Omegas to support Remus, to the cowardly, backstabbing secret keeper who got the Potters killed. A lot of the plot of Harry Potter hinges on Wormtail, and seeing him interact with different characters shows how multifaceted he is. First with Remus and Sirius in the Shrieking Shack when they reveal who he truly is, then with Harry begging for forgiveness and mercy, he's almost manipulative, and then we have him cowering around Voldemort a lot, creeping around Spinner's Lane all the way through to his eventual downfall when his loyalty to Voldemort wavers. I honestly think Wormtail is an S-tier character, with all of this nuance and how many different sides we see from him. Hermione Granger, I would bet, is the most popular character in Harry Potter. Like earlier when I said if you asked 100 people who their favourite Harry Potter character is, I think more people would say Hermione than would say anybody else. And I think in the books, 
Hermione is an almost perfect character. She is flawed in many, many ways, particularly in the early books. The way she talks down to people, like Ron when she judges how bad he is at magic on the Hogwarts Express, or when they're learning Wingardium Leviosa. She, like, she almost comes across as judgmental in some parts of the plot, as well as an insufferable know-it-all. In the books, we see her time and time again nagging Harry and Ron a bunch, and they clearly find her very irritating. But her character growth through the series is fantastic. Her flaws grow into strengths. She develops in line with her relationships, taking facets of Harry and Ron's characteristics as they grow together. Ron's loyalty, Harry's bravery, plus her own intelligence, both with books, but also with emotions. And we truly see her come into her own after Voldemort's return. And I think Hermione has some of the greatest moments of any character in the series. She has to be S tier. Fleur Delacour is a great character and the films did her dirty. Like, don't get me wrong, she is not written to be an entirely complex character, but she is the most capable witch from Bobatons, hence why she was chosen as Triwizard Champion. And Bobatons serves students from all over Western Europe, meaning she is one of the best witches of her age in all of Western Europe, plus her love and loyalty for Bill, her refusal to be intimidated by any of the girls who call her Flem. I think Fleur is great, and if she was in it more, she would be higher. Unfortunately, she is also wrapped up in the whole her main characteristic as being beautiful for a lot of what we see of her, particularly until like maybe the last book or two, meaning she has to go in B, but it's a high B. I love Myrtle, and not just because I did an excellent cosplay of her, but also because I think she's a great example of a utility character. In the Chamber of Secrets, she's used really well to advance the plot, with Polyjuice Potion, the Diary, and the Chamber itself. In the Goblet of Fire, she operates in the same way within the Prefect's bathroom. And in the Half-Blood Prince, she tells Harry about Draco's struggles. Like, there have to be ways in stories for characters to gain information and advance the plot. And those ways have to feel organic and normal, rather than just, oh, I conveniently happened upon this information, or it came to me in a dream, which actually does happen sometimes in Harry Potter. But Myrtle is a great example of doing that well. She loses marks because they casted somebody in their mid-30s for the films to play Moaning Myrtle, which makes that whole scene with a 14-year-old in the bath very weird. But ultimately, we are putting Myrtle in the B tier. Did somebody say Draco Malfoy? So I think Draco is a really interesting character over the course of the series. Like, in the earlier books, he's just a typical bully, like a secondary antagonist to Voldemort. But we get glimpses into his life as the series progresses. We see his parents. We understand what's going on with him at home a bit more. And then later in the series, he's thrown in at the deep end with his assignment from Voldemort, particularly after Lucius's downfall and the weight of the Malfoy family is entirely on this 16-year-old's shoulders. And I don't just mean the weight of the family in terms of their honour, but literally they're probably all going to be killed if Draco doesn't do what Voldemort wants him to. I think it's a really interesting arc. Plus, I love the debate in the fandom about whether he's morally responsible for the things he does, and whether he has a redemption arc, or whether he deserves one even. Personally, I think he's more deserving of redemption than Snape. Let me know if you agree in the comments, I know that one always fires people up. Spoiler alert, I'm always right. Anyway, I think Draco is a great character. I think he could have had more of a redemption arc than he actually gets, which would have completed his character journey more satisfyingly. So therefore, we can't put him in S tier, so he is gonna go in A. So Dudley Dursley. I actually really like a lot of the supporting antagonists in the Harry Potter stories. Like, a lot of them, including Dudley, are mostly harmless, bumbling idiots, aren't they? Who, compared to Umbridge or Voldemort, pose no real threat. And Dudley epitomises this. Like, he is horrible, but he often gets his comeuppance, with the pigtail courtesy of Hagrid, or the huge tongue courtesy of the Weasley twins. And then, of course, we have Dudley's attempt at making amends with Harry in the Deathly Hallows, which was a really nice touch. So overall, we're going to put Dudley in, I think, the A tier. Albus Percival Wolfric Brian Dumbledore. Headmaster, master manipulator, the only one Voldemort ever feared. This guy is a complex fellow. He seems loving and smart and like he's got it all figured out until everything unravels and we find out he's actually a gaslighter and a manipulator. That a lot of pain, suffering and death is a result of Dumbledore and his pursuit of the greater good. And whilst that doesn't make him a particularly good person, it makes him an excellent character. Like the moral ambiguity, the hidden flaws, 
a character we as readers put so much faith in from the early parts of the story, having that many flaws? It's an excellent characterization, especially when so many of his flaws are revealed after his death, so he can't even attempt to justify them. I will say that Dumbledore is sort of the embodiment of the trolley argument, sacrificing and manipulating the few to save the many. Should he have the authority to do that? No. But in the case of the trolley argument, how many of us would argue against sacrificing one person to save a hundred? All of this complexity, coupled with the fact that Dumbledore explaining things at the end of each book was always some of my favourite chapters, I think it makes him an S-tier character. Not an S-tier person, I should make that clear, but an S-tier character. Okay, so this is just a chest which I think is supposed to be Bellatrix Lestrange. I have to say I love the antagonists in Harry Potter. Bellatrix is like nothing else that we have in the series. Like Umbridge is lawful evil and Voldemort is maybe neutral evil. Bellatrix is chaotic evil. Like she loves being this psychopath. She revels in murder and torture and it's fantastic to see somebody that unhinged. And I have a headcanon that she has experimented so much with dark magic and trying to make herself more powerful so that Voldemort notices her that that's why she's so unhinged. Now, I would like to see some more depth to her character. Like, what caused her to be such a psychopath? Why does she enjoy inflicting pain so much? It's a shame we never really get a pensive scene or something giving that explanation, but I do think the scenes that she's in are elevated because of her. Like, you literally never know what she's going to do next. When she tortures Hermione, when she fights Mrs. Weasley, when she kills Sirius. Nothing is off the cards because of the way that Bellatrix is. And I love it. She's an S-tier character. Okay, so far we have been judging characters on a mix between how good of a character they are and how much I like them. The thing with Cho Chang is, we need to address the elephant in the room. Okay, Cho is a terrible attempt at representation for the Asian community in Harry Potter. I can't claim to be an expert, but from what I read, Cho Chang is not really a plausible Chinese person's name. Plus the stereotypes of the Asian character being in the smart person house is also worth mentioning. That aside, Cho is, in my opinion, also just a pretty weak character. Like, she's typically there to advance the plot of the male protagonist. First as an unattainable love interest, then an attainable one who has the audacity to be a human being with emotions. And once Harry loses interest in her romantically, she doesn't really offer much more to the narrative. Now, I think Harry having an early love interest who isn't his forever romantic interest is a good plot point, and quite a realistic one as well. I just, I wish they'd done more with her outside of that, and so we have to put her in the D tier. Dolores Umbridge is, in my opinion, the best villain in Harry Potter. She's far more insidious and evokes far more emotional reactions than Voldemort does in the whole series. The things that she does, to children, no less, and the reasons she does them, she's like an evil we can all relate to, whether that's somebody who abuses their power, or a bully, or somebody with a self-serving agenda who doesn't care who gets hurt so long as they're okay. She's like the Tory government. And as a despicable, infuriating, purely evil character, she is perfect. I think Stephen King once called her the best villain in fiction since Hannibal Lecter, and I'm inclined to agree. Phenomenal character, excellently crafted. We're going S tier. Okay, we are going to do the Weasley twins together here, and what a duo they are. Where Harry Potter can get really heavy and dark in places, the Weasleys are the reset that we always need. The breath of fresh air to reset the tension and reset the stakes. Kind of like Peeves, they add like a whimsical and fun element, no matter how intense the story is getting, and we love them for that. Especially because, for comic relief, they offer so much more than just comedy, right? The moments where Fred and George are sincere and serious hit so much harder, and I think that's a really important mix. Considering they're in the books a lot, I would have liked a deeper understanding of them. Like what they're driven by, what fears they have. I appreciate they're not main characters, so we're never going to get them in that much depth, but... Them having a side plot in the Goblet of Fire with Ludo Bagman made them so much more multifaceted. Like, we learn that Fred is willing to push things further and George kind of has to rein him in. And I would have liked just more little moments like that to understand the twins to a more significant level. But we don't get much of that and a lot of their interactions are just sort of surface level and they're just there to be funny. Their interactions with Hermione, it's just a bunch of quips. With their mother, they just wind her up. I would like to see the other side of it as well. Like, I love them, I just want more to love them more. So I'm sort of stuck between A and B tier. I think it has to be A. Like, I like them too much to make them B tier. Movie Ginny, 
would be unrankable. Lower than the D that we have at the bottom there. Book Ginny, though, has more going on, of course. She's smarter, she's wittier, she's more interesting. We see her displaying time and time again how strong-minded she is, how gifted she is, and I love that. So, for Ginny, based entirely on Book Ginny, we're gonna go A tier. I don't really know why Newt Scamander is in this. Um, just because I didn't like the Fantastic Beast films, we're going to put Newt in a D. It's nothing against him personally, I just I didn't like his franchise. Guilty by association. Dobby is a wonderful character. He is nuanced and interesting, and I genuinely smile through every chapter that he appears in. And after the Chamber of Secrets, I never expected to see him again. So when he popped up again in the Goblet of Fire, I was overjoyed. I honestly think the house elves are, in general, done well. Creature and Winky also have very compelling stories. Of course, there's the whole house elves enjoy being slaves trope, which is a huge glaring issue with the Harry Potter series that I hate and should not exist. But on a character by character basis, I think the house elves are done really well. Dobby's devotion to Harry, the moments that he stands up to people like Lucius and Bellatrix, it is all fantastic. Not to mention the way that his old habits are woven through his growth as a character. Like he snaps back to being that servant and all of those behaviours where he punishes himself even after he's been freed. Like it's so deep rooted in him and I just, I love Dobby as a character. I think he has the perfect depth for his character as well. So Dobby's going S tier. Okay, Dean Thomas is another character I would like more of. The glimpses we get into his life are interesting with his parents and his backstory. I like them. Like when he's traveling with Ted Tonks and Gornook in the Deathly Hallows, those are some of my favorite scenes featuring Dean. We just don't get much of them. So as supporting characters go, he's fine. If there was more to him, he'd be higher, but he's in the C tier, just sat there with potential. I like the sorting hat, okay? But there is one thing about it that annoys me. Like his songs and the sorting ceremony, and even Harry's uncertainty of maybe belonging in Slytherin, that's all great. He brings plenty to the story. But in the Chamber of Secrets, when the sorting hat is just randomly dropped off by Forks, and it has the sword of Gryffindor within it, it's just a really lazy climax to that story. Like, ah, oh, our protagonist is in a situation where everything looks dire, there's no way out of this. Oh, what a convenient turn of events that a phoenix brought a hat and inside the hat is a sword and the protagonist can use that to save the day. It's just not really a satisfying way to resolve a plot, right? So the sorting hat is fine, but it's just involved in my least favourite part of the series. So overall, we're going C tier for the sorting hat. All right, considering the first year that we meet Mad-Eye Moody, it's not actually Mad-Eye Moody. I really like his character. He is quirky and rough, and he adds a great dynamic to the Order of the Phoenix. One issue I do have with him is the way that he and Harry speak to each other in the Order of the Phoenix book. It's as though they actually know each other, but they don't. They never actually interacted the year before. And the way that Harry just sort of trusts him, as though the bond from the Goblet of Fire was real, that always really annoyed me. But Moody, as a roughed-up war hero, paranoid, seemingly always angry. I love it. I would love him to have a spin-off about his years in the auras. I just, I want to know more about Moody because he's a great character. It's between B and A. I think I like him more than I'm annoyed by him. So we're going to go in the A tier. I think Lavender Brown gets a bad rap. Is it bad rep or bad rap? I never know which one it is. People call her annoying and insufferable. And largely, I think that's because she's Hermione's romantic rival. Like sure, in reality, she would be irritating if you came across her in real life. She's a 15 year old who thinks she's in love. And is she really doing anything wrong? She's just trying to show affection for her boyfriend. And she's excited about her new relationship. That said, she's not a particularly interesting character beyond that. Like I do like her friendship with Pavati and their love for divination. It's a fun little addition, but ultimately there's not enough going on with Lavender, so she's C tier. Sirius Black is a complex character and it would be really easy to just say how cool he is and how great he is to Harry after he gets out of Azkaban. But actually, I think Sirius has a lot of flaws that people often overlook. Like the way he almost tries to guilt trip Harry in the Order of the Phoenix because Harry doesn't want Sirius meeting him in Hogsmeade. Bearing in mind Sirius is a wanted fugitive. He even uses a reference to James to try and manipulate Harry. That coupled with the argument Sirius has with Mrs. Weasley about Harry and his welfare, it just all feels irresponsible. That said, Sirius is there for Harry whenever he needs him, which is more than I can say for Remus Lupin. And it's a nice balance between friend and father figure. Like, I think if he was in more than just like three books, Sirius would be in the S tier. But in this case, it's just A tier for Sirius. Okay, a lot of people talk about Narcissa as though she's a godsend of a character. I think because of the way that she lies to Voldemort to save Harry in the Forbidden Forest. But honestly, for me, she's just a bit of a nothing character. Like, I wish they had done more with her. But she just doesn't do much. 
She never really stands up against Lucius, nor does she stand with Lucius for much of what he does. She's just not really featured in many plots at all, and as great as it is that she lies to Voldemort and does so in the name of being a mother, I don't think that's enough to get her out of the C tier. All right, Grindelwald, another Fantastic Beast character. Much like New, I would like to give him a D because Fantastic Beast was not a good series. But Grindelwald's contribution to Dumbledore's backstory, particularly in the Deathly Hallows, is very interesting. First of all, there's the underlying hint that he and Dumbledore were a couple. Secondly, there's the way he brings out the worst in Dumbledore, and we hear those stories in the Deathly Hallows. Grindelwald is an essential part of the Dumbledore plot, and that is an essential part of Harry's conflict in the first half of the final book. It's only a small role, but Grindelwald is important to it, which means he can just about get up into a B tier. By association, more than anything. Lucius Malfoy's Fall from Grace is fantastic. Like, his pompous arrogance in the Chamber of Secrets, fast forward to him being a shell of a man in the beginning of the Deathly Hallows as Voldemort demands his wand. I adore it. It's such a unique journey for the Harry Potter series. And it's a great way to get more out of the character of Draco, too. Like, the more Lucius falls, the more desperate Draco becomes. So I really, I really like Lucius' involvement in the series. From him being instrumental in the whole Chamber of Secrets plot, from Dobby to the diary all being linked back to him, all the way to the Order of the Phoenix when he leads the Death Eaters to the Ministry to try and get the prophecy, and then he fails, and we fast forward to the Deathly Hallows when he's just a shell of a man. Oh, the scenes at Malfoy Manor in that last book. Lucius brings a lot to the story. He's on the cusp between A and S tier, but I think it's going to have to be A. I might make myself an unpopular person here. A lot of people adore Hedwig as a character. And I don't know if it's just because she's cute or because she's in it with Harry from the beginning, but like, what does she really do? Honestly, what does she really add to the plot? Like, don't get me wrong, I think her death was unnecessary, I didn't want her to die. But as pets go, she doesn't add much to the story. Compared to Scabbers and Crookshanks, I think Hedwig has to be a D-tier character. Lily dies before the series even starts, and so it would be easy to make her D-tier because she's just not really in it. But her sacrifice is such an integral part to the plot. And hearing her scream with the Dementors when they get too close to Harry, it's such a big part of his journey in The Prisoner of Azkaban. And of course, Snape pining after her is central to his role and all of his decisions. So I guess Lily actually contributes a lot to the plot, certainly more than Hedwig does. Although her influence is often indirect, because she's dead, she obviously she can't do it directly, can she? With that in mind, we are going to put Lily in the B tier. Nagini is a cool addition to Voldemort as a villain, giving him a little snaky companion to slither around and be intimidating. Like, it adds another level of creepy to him. But she's not that much more than just a weaponized pet. And though the revelation of her being a Horcrux was good, and actually the Bathilda bagshot twist in Godric's Hollow was kind of terrifying, and Nagini does give us the badass moment where Neville cuts her down with the Sword of Gryffindor, I think she has to go in the B tier. I can't put her any higher, really. And she's only that high because of the cool moment she gives us, not because she's really that great of a character. I actually think Filch is a really cool case study when it comes to secondary antagonists. Like the way he's actually a big scary threat in the Philosopher's Stone and Harry's terrified of being caught out of bed by him. And then by the later books, he's little more than comic relief. Like it's a really interesting journey because he's literally useless by the end of the series. And when you compare him to people like Umbridge and Voldemort and all the other things that Harry has to face through the series, a squib caretaker is not going to be that scary at that point. But it's a cool journey since the series is more or less told from Harry's perspective. Seeing how references to Filch change year by year, it's, it's so interesting. That said, very few plot points actually really move through him. And would the series miss him if he wasn't in it? Probably not. I think we're going to put Filch in the, the B tier. Close to C though. There's a trope in fiction that the main characters are shown the way by the wise guardian. Like Yoda in Star Wars or Gandalf in Lord of the Rings. And in Harry Potter, Dumbledore is the obvious choice for that trope. But I low-key feel like maybe Hagrid does a lot of the heavy lifting here too. Particularly in the earlier books where Dumbledore is holding Harry a bit at arm's length. Hagrid gives him the emotional support, the encouragement. We get scenes in Hagrid's hut, which is really great for soul searching from Harry's perspective. And a lot of the plot development, again, particularly in the earlier books, comes from interactions with or around Hagrid. And besides his importance to the plot, having a lovable country bumpkin, who is low-key one of the most powerful wizards in the wizarding world, by the way, like how many stunning charms does he take without being knocked out? 
but him still being loving and gentle and kind of hopeless. It's, it's so endearing. Plus, I think he's an incredible father figure to Harry. I'm annoyed Harry never puts Rubius in his kids' names when he's naming them after the people who really were great to him in life. Hagrid's a great friend and a great character. He's going in the S tier. Disclaimer, Luna Lovegood has always been one of my favourite characters, so this might be a little bit biased. But I think a character who is so unusual and different, even in the wizarding world, it's great. Like, I love seeing her thrive as her true self. Plus, there's the way that she integrates perfectly into that propaganda side of the plot, and is both the antidote and the antithesis to propaganda. Like, she gives Harry a platform to spread his truth in the Quibbler, which ironically also just prints a bunch of misinformation. But the message that Luna spreads, be yourself, be different, be unashamedly you, it's amazing. She is, she's quirky, she's loyal, she's a great friend. Luna is amazing, we love her, she's S tier, no doubt. So Tonks is another one, kind of like Hedwig, where I feel like I don't have that emotional draw to the character that other people seem to. Like, I like Tonks, she seems like she's sweet and funny and clearly very talented. And her ending with Remus is truly heartbreaking. But equally, I don't feel like we get significant enough of an introduction to her for me to really care about her as a character. Not compared to many of the other characters from the Order of the Phoenix. Like sure, she's likeable, but there's just not enough substance to her character. Which is most notable in the Half-Blood Prince where she's just miserable all year. I haven't had enough exposition to her as a character to really care. So look, she's fine. I think she's C tier. Katie Bell isn't really significant enough to warrant a high rating, right? She's on the Quidditch team, she almost gets killed by Malfoy, but besides that, what does she actually do, you know? She's D tier, not because she's bad, just because she's not really in it very much. So Peeves is a fun character. The pranks, the chaos, much like the Weasleys, Peeves does a good job of just giving us those moments to reset and take a breath. But with that said, Peeves is sort of like a budget version of the twins by the end of the series. In the earlier books, Peeves causes all of this mayhem, but in the later books, the Weasley twins cause similar mayhem, but their scenes feel more significant. Don't get me wrong, Peeves running riot through the castle without consequence is great, but it feels like a watered down version of what the twins does. So overall, we're gonna put Peeves in C tier. Much like Dumbledore, I don't like Snape as a person, but there is no denying how good of a character he is to the story. And so we're going to have to take into account how important he is to the plot, how well written and morally grey he is, the whiplash we get from deciding is he good, is he bad, balanced with regardless of his allegiance, he's awful to his students, and he's awful to Harry, and he has a past as a Death Eater, like he chose to be one of Voldemort's followers. And then there's the moment he kills Dumbledore and reveals himself to be a Death Eater, only for it all to be a deception and he's actually fighting against Voldemort. I don't like him as a person, but my god, does it make for an exciting plot. Again, terrible person, but he's such a great red herring to have through the series. Snape is an S-tier character. McGonagall is S-tier. Do I need to say anything more? She's just a well-crafted character. Good, honourable, strict, but with moments of softness and care. She's just S-tier, McGonagall, no question. I actually think Quirrell is a great character. Like, the bait and switch between him and Snape in the Philosopher's Stone is fantastically crafted. And the way Quirrell has all of these well-crafted moments of foreshadowing to reveal him as the actual villain in the first book, it's so well done. He's an excellent character, useless, as Voldemort's cronies go, completely useless, but a good character. We're going A tier. I know the fandom loves Regulus, mostly because of fan fiction, I assume, but Regulus is barely in the books, right? Apart from stealing the locket, and that RAB twist was really good, to be fair, and was like an extra knife in the wound after Dumbledore died to realise it was all for nothing. Him being weakened by the potion and away from the school, no consequence, because it was a fake Horcrux. But apart from Regulus's role in Creature's Tale, he doesn't really contribute much else. Like, he could have been anyone, honestly, which is why I have to put Regulus. I have to put Regulus in D tier, because he's not a bad character, he's just a bit of a nothing character. I like Ron a lot. He is loyal, honourable, very, very human. Like, he's so flawed. He's hot-headed, he wants an easy life, he probably is the most accurately written teenager in the series with the way that he just, like, behaves and acts. Ron is a proper school kid. He hates homework, he gets embarrassed, he loves his friends, he lashes out, he just wants to enjoy himself, and I love him for all of that. Plus, the movies do him so dirty by taking away a bunch of his major contributions and either giving them to other characters or just removing them completely. Like, when he stands up 
on a broken leg to tell Sirius Black, who he thinks is a mass murderer at that point, that to get to Harry he has to go through him, or standing up to Snape to defend Hermione when he calls her a know-it-all. Ron is great, Weasley well and truly is our king, it's S tier for Ron. Neville Longbottom is S tier. Probably the greatest character development in all of fiction. Okay, maybe I'm exaggerating, but the way Neville goes from a blithering idiot who can't do simple spells to a super powerful, confident, Nagini-slaying badass, it's incredible. Neville is the best character in the series. S tier, no questions. Much like Dean, I do like Seamus, but he also doesn't really do much. Nothing of any significance, anyway. Like, he's a fun background character who has some witty one-liners and some funny moments. He brings about some more of the propaganda, the Ministry says Harry's a liar, like that plot line a little bit. But overall, if you remove Seamus from the story, do you really lose very much? I think the answer is no. And so we have to go C tier for Seamus. I think Sybil Trelawney is probably more significant to the plot than any of us thought she would be when we first met her. Like first she was just quirky and funny, but then she makes the prediction about Wormtail returning to Voldemort and then it's revealed she made the prophecy that caused Voldemort to go after Harry in the first place and kill his parents. Add into that the emotional elements of her standoff with Umbridge in the Order of the Phoenix. Which, by the way, united McGonagall and Trelawney. And McGonagall doesn't like Trelawney, which says a lot about how awful Umbridge is. Trelawney brings a lot to the table. She's an A-tier character. If it wasn't for the Half-Blood Prince, I'd probably make Voldemort a C-tier or even D-tier villain. Like, genuinely, without the context of the Half-Blood Prince, we know nothing about Voldemort's motivations. The reasons why he did what he did, or was the way he was. And without that, he's just evil just because. Like, there's no depth, there's no meaning, there's no point. In fact, for the first five books, we just know Voldemort is evil because people tell us he's evil. And as a villain, if we compare that to Umbridge, where it's way more that we're shown how bad she is rather than just told it, through her awful actions and her sinister decisions, like, Umbridge is an exceptional villain, and she highlights how average Voldemort is as an antagonist. We're told how powerful he is far more than we're shown it. We're told he's evil far more than we see it. And honestly, it means that I'm not that frightened when he shows up every summer. The half of the prince, though, comes in and does more to establish his why and his how and develop him more. And then the Deathly Hallows gives us more interactions, which helps build him up a little bit more. But overall, I think because for most of the season, he's just a mere villain, Voldemort has to go into the B tier, and I think that's generous. So I think Winky is a good addition to the House Elf family. Her journey of being contrasting to Dobby, being sacked rather than freed, hating her freedom rather than embracing it and loving it, her getting drunk in the Goblet of Fire, it's a really interesting subplot. If there was more of her in the book, she would probably be higher, but I think she's probably between the B and C tiers. I think she does enough to be B tier just because of the interest in the Crouch family plot. And speaking of which characters I like, in this video I talk about which characters I would most like to see in the Harry Potter show who didn't make it into the movies. Winky is included in that list.